This is the inside of the 2020 Auto Sleeper Burford Duo. If I firstly come to the main control panel, you can see that at the top here it's giving us the external temperature. This little picture of a sun here is just indicating that the solar panel is active. This lightning strike here is just indicating that we are currently connected up to mains electricity. We have the humidity in the middle here. And then on the right hand side, we have the internal temperature. To turn the 12 volt on, just press here. And the internal lights will come on automatically. These can all be individually turned on and off on their own switches. If it is these touch lights in the ceiling, they do need to be touched to come on. And the switch down here will just control the entrance lights. The control panel does not necessarily have to be on for these to come on. Next we have water pump on and off. We need the water pump on so we can get water out of the taps, flush the toilet and fill the boiler if it's been drained down. Water levels just here. So how much water is in the fresh tank and how much water is in the waste tank. Power levels just here. So we have condition of the leisure battery, condition of the vehicle battery, how many amps we're either using or have coming in, just dependent. Mains current and the solar current just there. Warning light on and off just here and it will also put on the entrance light just underneath the habitation door. Battery selection just here, so V for vehicle, L for leisure. Whichever battery you've selected on here is the battery you are using to run the back end of the motorhome. And it's also the battery you are charging if you are hooked up to mains electricity. Settings menu just here. So within this we have power settings, Charging etc is all best left in smart mode. It will just do it all for you. We then have automatic tank fill just here. We need this on if we're going to be using the whale filler hose on the outside of the motorhome. It will just make the solenoid live, allowing water in. We then have tank heaters on and off here. Because the temperature outside is extremely warm at the moment, even though I've now just pressed them, the tank heaters will not come on. The temperature outside does have to drop below about 3-4 degrees before they would actually activate. We then have lights that come on when we turn the main control panel. So as you saw when I turned the control panel on at the beginning, the main lights can't come on. We can turn them off if we want to. And we can have it so the awning light comes on when we turn the power on as well. It's just down to personal preference. Key beeps on and off. Water level alarms on and off for both the fresh and the waste tanks. Set the brightness of this backlight. How quickly this screen times out when you're not actually using it. Set the time and the date. And then back to the beginning again. Beside this control panel, we then have the control panel for the Truma heating, hot water and air conditioning. So to turn this on, just press the button here. As you can see, we have a series of icons up here. And as I begin to rotate this button, they will begin to flash. So if we start with the first one just here, this one is for the heating and the air conditioning. So if I now click on it, you'll see we have heater. And if I rotate, we have air conditioning. So if we start with the heater, if I now just click on it, you'll see that the heater is off. And all I now do is just rotate and pick whatever temperature I would like it to be inside the motorhome. And it will go right the way up to 30 degrees. Once you've decided, just click to store it in and you'll see a little flames appeared above there. That little flame just represents the heating system and it's just letting you know that you've set a parameter. Whenever the heating is actually in operation, it will begin to flash and it will continue to flash until it's achieved the temperature you have asked. If I now 
go back into the heater and turn it back off again and now we click on it again and rotate we can go into the air conditioning as you can see air conditioning off we can use it to vent the motorhome cool the motorhome heat it or we can just have it in auto which is a bit like climate control it will just keep the motorhome at the temperature you have asked but I'm going to go on to cool click on it adjust the temperature click again and it will now fire itself up if I now go right the way to the end here this is the circulation fan for either the heating or for the air conditioning as you can see in the air conditioning mode we have low mid high and night mode for the heating it just has low and high If we now move across to the next icon, this one here is for your hot water. So again, if I now click on it, hot water is off. And all I now do is just rotate. And we can heat hot water in eco mode, which will give us a temperature of about 40 degrees. If I rotate it again, we can heat it in hot, which will give us a temperature of about 60 degrees. And if I rotate again, we can also perform a boost on the boiler. The boost was mainly designed for if there's going to be more than one of you having a shower in quick succession of each other or if you just want hot water extremely quickly. If you do perform the boost and the heating is actually on, the heating will turn off as it needs to use the extra power. And again, the icon will continue to flash until it's achieved the temperature you have asked. After that we then have power source. So at the moment to heat the hot water we are using gas on its own. If I now rotate we can put it into dual fuel mode so we can use a mixture of gas and mains at 1 kilowatt or a mixture of gas and mains at 2 kilowatts. Dual fuel is extremely handy especially in the winter months if you want to get up to temperature nice and quickly and it will only use the gas as it's required. Next we have electricity at one kilowatt and electricity at two kilowatts. So again, just dependent on the amperage of the site you're on to try and avoid tripping. If I now drop to the lower icons, this first one here is for a basic timer. So if I now click on it, it will ask you, right, when would you like the timer to start? and then when would you like the timer to end and then what would you like on within that timer so let's say we want the heating on we all want hot water on hot we do want to use dual fuel and we'll leave the fan in eco once we've done all that timer on or off if I now activate the timer the timer icon We'll come up in the corner and because that timer is now set within the time period I've asked it you'll see the timer is now active if I now go back to it I can turn the timer back off again and when we go back in we can then alter it again next we just have the lighting control for the air conditioning unit As you can see, it's dimmable. Then we just have clock set. And then lastly, we have settings. So we have offset, which is just for the thermostat just there. So if you don't think it's quite correct, you can just slightly alter it. This is the air conditioning controls. Leave this alone. This is just for its sensor. Temperature, just if you prefer it displayed in Celsius or Fahrenheit. Brightness of this screen. 12 or 24 hour clock. Language. Index, more for the technicians. It just lets them know what software it's running. And then lastly, full factory reset. From time to time, 
these control panels will fire up error codes they will usually be something quite basic so if at the moment I turn the 12 volt off here we should get an error code appear here indicating that we've lost 12 volt there we go so we get a warning triangle just here and then we get a code just here so W255H is I've lost 12 volt reason being is because I've turned the control panel off so if I now turn it back on again as you can see the error code has now just automatically disappeared so nine times out of ten as long as you rectify the problem the error code will just automatically go out other error codes you may get are I do not have main supply or I do not have gas again rectify the problems and the error codes will disappear this Truma system can also be controlled via the Truma app if you are going to use this you need to download the app onto your device make sure the Bluetooth is turned on and then launch it and it will then ask you to come to the iNet box just here it will ask you to push the Bluetooth button you will then be able to connect up to the app and the box and be able to control your heating and your hot water locally via Bluetooth what you can also do is purchase a pay -as you go SIM card and just pop it in where my finger is here register it through the app and then you will be able to control your heating and your hot water from much further afield if we now come down to the bottom of the bench seat just here you'll see that we have storage just here and we can also get to it from the top so again we can see the storage just there we have the leisure battery just here and then the main 25 amp fuse just there we have the outside gas fill point there and then obviously the pipe work coming in and then dropping into the gas tank some 12 volt fuses just here they are all labelled up and then we have the main consumer unit just here so we have more 12 volt fuses just here again they're labelled up and they will correspond in the auto sleeper handbook if one of these fuses blows it will illuminate to let you know we then have the main strip switches just here so we have the three individual MCBs main RCD and test button just here again numbered up and will correspond in the auto sleeper handbook two isolator switches just here for components that use mains electricity so we have the amber one here for the Truma heating and hot water and the air conditioning etc if you turn this off and you're trying to run anything on main supply you will get the error code this can be left on it's more for maintenance than anything else we then have the green one which is for the battery charger again we want to be able to charge both vehicle and leisure batteries from the main supply so again just best left alone this one here will illuminate if we have reverse polarity connected to the motorhome this can sometimes be found on some continental sites full system shutdown just here so if you're not going to use the motorhome for a prolonged period you can press the button just here and kill any residual draw on the leisure battery this can be extremely handy in the winter months when there isn't a great deal of UV light hitting the solar panel if we now come across to the other bench seat and we lift up we have storage beneath here and we also have a safe just tucked in the corner there storage just above the microwave here and then we have the microwave itself 
will work when we're hooked up to mains electricity and the isolator switch for it is just here. This particular microwave does not require a microwave plate and it has all the usual quick start just here, stop just here and then all your power settings and defrost. Beneath that is the Dometic fridge freezer. To turn the unit on just press here. This is an automatic model so as long as you are on A for auto it will find the best power source it can. So because we're currently hooked up to mains electricity this put us onto mains with a little picture of the two pin plug just there. If I now went outside and pulled the mains lead out it would then automatically attempt to fire itself up onto gas and as soon as we start the engine it will then automatically put itself over to 12 volt maintain to keep itself cold whilst on the move. We can take it out of auto if we want to so I could manually put it onto gas and I could manually put it onto 12 volt maintain. It's going to beep at us and we're going to get a little red flashing triangle just here because the engine's currently not running. You can also get this warning if it's tried to light on gas and failed. This also works as a reset button so it will then try to ignite itself again. But really auto is the easiest function to have it on as it will do it all for you. Do make sure that when you're not wanting to use the fridge that you are turning it completely off because this is a motorhome with a gas tank. If you accidentally leave this on and then you're not connected up to the main supply, it will just deplete your gas tank. Anti-condensation jacket button just there. This needs to be on in the warmer months of the year. This will stop a buildup of condensation at the back of the unit, which would then run down and form a puddle. It does not need to be on in the colder months. Temperature control just here. freestanding table just here we have both TV satellite connection points just here and 12 volt and the television can just stand just on here extractor fan so we have two fan speeds and then we have two light levels. Electric hot plate just here so this will work when hooked up to mains electricity and it operates just here. We then have the three gas rings and it's just a matter of just pushing in, twisting and pushing the igniter. Beneath that is the grill, and again just push in, twist and push the igniter. And then at the bottom, the oven. Do make sure that all the travel bump stops are all removed before using to avoid them melting. You'll find one on the oven rack just there and then you'll find them also located on the grill pan. If we now come into the bedroom 
we have wardrobe just here and located in here is the digital amplifier for the MaxView television aerial on the roof on and off just here control the boost just there make sure this is on if you're wanting to tune in a television also in here is the Huawei mobile Wi-Fi sender before use remove this back plate and the battery and insert the SIM card that you'll find in your book pack the Wi-Fi code is also underneath the battery as well so make sure you make a note of that as well once you've put all that in turn the unit on on the button just here and it will then send out the code you then just locate the code through the or through the Wi-Fi settings and then you can connect up to it and pay the subscription storage underneath the bed and underneath this bed here we have storage but we also have the Truma boiler so with the Truma boiler all we really need to know what to do is how to drain it down for winterization this can be done on this drain just here so with this drain it is automatic so if the temperature outside the motorhome drops below about 3-4 degrees this valve will automatically ping open to drop any water out of the boiler to frost protect itself if this happens all that will happen is the little blue button just down there will just pop out to reset it just push it back in again if it will not reset it's just too cold in the motorhome and you'll need to turn the heating on to generate some heat and then it will be able to reset if you are going to manually drain it all you need to do is just twist this blue diamond here the blue button will pop out and it will begin to drop all the water out of the boiler do make sure that the water pump is turned off or otherwise it will just frantically try to refill the boiler as you are emptying it to reset it twist the blue diamond and then push the blue button back in again and it will then reset fill up the fresh water tank turn the water pump on and then it will begin to reprime the system a couple of gas isolation taps just there there are a few more dotted around the motorhome they are again all more for maintenance than anything else I always say if you do smell gas in the motorhome just go underneath it to the gas tank and isolate it at the source shower cubicle just here when you turn the light on the extractor fan will start do you make sure that the shower screen is fully clipped back for travel basin just here and then we have the toilet just there to open to the cassette just slide the lever across push to flush just on the top there do make sure the water pumps on or otherwise it will not work level indicator just here so it will rotate round to red when it needs emptying and then close back up again just here if the lever has been left open and you try to remove the cassette from the outside it will not come out so if you do feel resistance just make sure nobody's left this open the front bed is extremely easy to make just slide both parts across and then just pull the cushions across you will find that once these are all in place that there is a small little gap down the side and that is what this infill is for just here it folds out and fills in the gap.